We are not dreaming. Sora is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What a great day for Kingdom Hearts fans, Smash Bros. fans, and fans of gaming. And with the confirmation and the reveal, we got an amazing trailer to showcase Sora finally entering the Ultimate Fight. And as with most Smash trailers, there are a ton of awesome Kingdom Hearts references within the Sora reveal trailer. And being a Kingdom Hearts lore expert, I'm going to break down all the references that I was able to find in the Smash trailer. But if I missed any, leave them in the comment section below. Some of them are small little nods, and some are increasingly meta. So if you guys are hyped for that, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to HMK for more Kingdom Hearts Smash content every week. Let's dive directly into the darkness and emerge in the light. Now, from the beginning of the trailer, we get some really cool heavy references before Sora even gets shown off. In hindsight, the context is pretty massive. When the Smash Fireball goes out and leaves a small ember behind, this is a Kingdom Hearts reference to Sora's famous line when he's about to face Ansem in Kingdom Hearts 1, that the heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But deep down, he's learned that there is a light that will never go out. And at the same time, with the light of the Smash Ball going out and darkness prevailing and all of the Smash Fires reverting to trophies, this is another nod to the legend of the Keyblade War, in which, because of the war, of all of the fighting, it attracted the darkness which eventually consumed the world and Kingdom Hearts, thus having the darkness prevail. In relation to Smash, this could be seen as all of the fighters, all of the fighting they have done has attracted the final darkness to put out the light of the Smash Ball in order to end the final fight and have them revert to trophies. But as the legend continues, after the Keyblade War and darkness prevailing, the light within the hearts of children restored the world, in which the final ember that finally summoned Sora thanks to Mario was able to restore the light within all the Smash fighters, the light within the heart of the child Sora. And segueing off of that, this leads to another Kingdom Hearts reference from Dream Drop Distance as spoken by Ansem the Wise. In relation to the Smash characters becoming trophies, they are no longer real, but Sora finally showing up in Smash, his heart can see the heart and light in all things, and thus they become real again. Sora has a heart like that, uncorrupted, willing to see the good before the bad. When he sees the heart in something, it then becomes real. Also, another possible nod to when Mario approaches the final ember to summon Sora, this could be a small reference to Sora approaching Ventus's heart when Ventus needed Sora most. And then when Sora is finally here, him floating in the air and everybody seeing him, and of course Sora meaning sky, there is one sky, one destiny, and everyone shares the same sky. And then of course we have to talk about that smash splash out for Sora. Sora is finally here. This references a couple of things. One, the long wait for Sora to be in Smash, the immense fan request and popularity for Sora to be in Smash, and of course, Sora being the final character. And now we finally go into the references found in the gameplay of the trailer. It starts off with Sora doing his up smash, which is indeed Magic Flash. I'm actually really glad they put this in the game. The next reference can be found when Sora is falling. This is a reference to him diving into the heart, and of course, between that of light and darkness. Two extremely big focal points within Kingdom Hearts. Moving on, we have Sora finally reuniting with Cloud. Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora reuniting with OG Final Fantasy 7 Cloud, just like how they met in Olympus Coliseum in Kingdom Hearts 1. Next is a pretty cool but a pretty sad reference. When we're getting to the aspect showing off the stage of Hollow Bastion becoming the dive to the heart and the Station of Awakening, we see a segment of Ventus's Station of Awakening becoming Shion's and Shion's becoming Sora. This is a huge reference to the unhappy endings of both Ventus and Shion who eventually had to return and reside within Sora's heart for a long time before finally being restored in Kingdom Hearts 3. And then we come to the final smash, Sora sealing the keyhole. This references a couple of things, just like when Sora has to seal the keyholes of various worlds in Kingdom Hearts 1. It is also combined with the notion of Sora sealing the door to darkness at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, but uses a smash door instead. 
I thought it would have been cool if the door just disappeared into the void, just like in Kingdom Hearts 1. But hey, this is Smash, and the door had to be smashed. And then we get to something juicy. Sora fighting against Sephiroth in his Kingdom Hearts 2 clothes references the battle they had at Radiant Garden, given that the stage kind of looks like that area within that of Radiant Garden, past the Great Mall going into Villain's Vale. That was really cool in my opinion. And now into the final part of the trailer, we get a flurry of references, so try to keep up. The first is Sora running on Destiny Islands with a nice batch up of the beach in the background in Smash. The next reference after that is Sora finally making it to the Realm of Darkness to help Riku, here portrayed by Sora diving down using Hurricane Blast at the Fountain of Dreams. And of course, a gigantic reference here, Sora is relaxing with Kairi at the sunset on the Destiny Islands beach. This next one was pretty cool. It's Sora feeding and playing with Dream Eaters from Dream Drop Distance as portrayed by Colorful Kirby's. And then next up, we have Sora chilling with Waylord, or should I say, Monstro. Pretty clever there, Nintendo. And then we have Timeless River Sora going against that monochrome version of King DDD that is meant to represent OG Pete in Timeless River. Then we have Sora with an egg, but in the egg comes out two Pichus, just like how Sora cooks in Kingdom Hearts 3 when breaking an egg and then you get two yolks. And then of course we have Sora celebrating here with Pikachu inkling with a big heart in the background. Wrapping that up, we see Sora with a ton of worlds in the background, which of course is the big inspiration and identity of this character that goes off to many different worlds, traveling among them, making new friends. And then the last shot here, we have Sora shaking hands with Mario, the character that he originally aspired to be. The meta breakdown here is that Kingdom Hearts was originally envisioned by Hironobu Sakaguchi and Shinji Hashimoto to be a video game that is able to stand against and compete with Super Mario after seeing how well Super Mario 64 performed. And after a bit of brainstorming, they came to the conclusion that only a character like Mickey Mouse would be able to stand against Super Mario, leading to the catalyst of the concept of Kingdom Hearts. And with Sora, finally shaking hands with the identity that led to the concept of his creation, we have truly come full circle. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you are ready for Sora in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We did it and what a ride it has been. If I missed any references or little nods, please leave them in the comment section below and let's celebrate this amazing time together. Remember, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to HMK for more Smash and Kingdom Hearts content every week. So until Sora makes it to Smash, this has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.